The typical market day began in the pre-dawn hours. You would hear it before you'd see it. Wheels rolling, people moving through the woods and forests onto the roads that entered into Williamsburg. And eventually, these people carrying stuff would show up in the center of town at the marketplace. These are what we would call the country people setting up stalls, setting up their goods for sale. They would be joined late in the morning by butchers, bakers, and other people from the city who would uh, set up their goods for sale. And finally, around dawn, perhaps six o'clock in the morning, a loud bell would ring and market day would be ushered in. And at that time, Hundreds of people would be gathering around the market for this customary event. Of the goods that were sold there, were, the prices were set by the common hall, that is the city council, who would set the highest price that any good could be sold, such as cheese, butter, milk, bread, you name it, any food stuff, they would set the upper limits of that price. This was no freewheeling emporium but a highly regulated area because uh, there was this sort of a Christian attitude about allowing people have access to what they call the necessities of life, that everyone should have equal access to things that they needed to sustain themselves. There was a great concern for making sure the food for sale was wholesome food. It was not stale, uh, the meats were not uh, what they call blown meat with, with uh, flying larvae in it, or leprous swine, uh, which I can only imagine what that would have been. Uh, those things could be seized by the clerk of the market, a person who was hired by the common hall to oversee and regulate the market every day it was open. And there was complaints of, you know, a lot of this beef was out in the sun uh, for much of the day, and, and there's concerns about that as well. So that's why much of the overhangs uh, were intended to shade those things that might be affected by the heat of the day. The market house is the place where the butchers would hang their goods for sale, but spreading out beyond the market house is this large paved area what known as the marketplace. Uh, the reason they had it paved is to make it possible to clean after market day because a lot of refuse would be left around. The um, butchers often got accused of throwing hooves and heads and offal uh, on the ground and, and uh, oyster shells would have been left behind which would have smelled in the hot sun of, of Williamsburg summers and therefore it, this area needed to be washed down, swept clean uh, by the clerk of the market, and therefore this paving provided a convenient um, surface to, to clean. Just look at this, please. Unfortunately for Colonial Williamsburg, we've not had a market house uh, in place since the beginning of the, re the restoration in the early uh, 1930s, Dr. Goodwin wanted to have one, but for some reason they postponed that. So finally we're going to get a market house, which is wonderful. The reason why it's so wonderful is because this market house signals that it is a place, a cross section, where so many people could, would, would have come to do their business. So this is really the only place in Williamsburg in the 18th century where we, you would get gentry ladies and servants and slaves and butchers with blood on their hands and it would be this great cross-section and all kinds of things happen at this marketplace not just simply selling of goods but gossip people would finding out what's going on in town notices would be pinned and nailed up to the, the post of the the market house announcing what's going on in the world outside of Williamsburg so it is it is a great crossroads of the people and of commerce